Hello everyone. It's great to see you again. Spring is around the corner, so I thought today would be a good day to start spring cleaning this old house. I'm going to begin right here in the parlor, and my habit is to start at the top of the room and work my way down. So please hang out and clean with me. To begin, I'm cleaning the ceiling and walls with a microfiber dust mop. Many viewers have asked about the wallpaper in this room. It's a green and cream color, and we purchased it from Schumacher Wall Hangings about 20 years ago. I love how this dust mop moves effortlessly above, below, and between the paintings in the room. This mop has a really long extendable handle because the ceilings in this room are 13 feet tall. This mirror has been here since the 19th century. It has a lot of detailing. This is Prudence. It's time to tackle the fireplace. So I'm up on a ladder. I have my water and vinegar in a spray bottle. I have a microfiber cloth and I have a squeegee. I like to spray the mirror first and then squeegee it, and then wipe up any residue with the microfiber cloth. If there are any streaks, a microfiber cloth will remove them. Look at how much dirt has come off of that mirror. I never use paper towels when I clean. Too wasteful. Microfiber cloths and terry cloths always do a much better job than paper towels do. Onto the fireplace mantle. Now, I have some wax over here from candles that were burning. Easiest way to get rid of that candle wax is to just use a plastic scraper. The wax comes right up. Now to clean the fireplace mantle, I use only water and a terry cloth. This mantle has a lot of grooves and curves. It's a beautiful fireplace mantle. I never appreciated all of the grooves and curves in this Victorian mantle until I went to clean it. You feel all of the details when the cloth rubs against the mantle. Now it's time to clean the fireplace ashes. We use the fireplaces in this house all during winter. The fireplaces are very efficient because they were built in the 19th century when everyone relied on a fireplace for warmth. I'm using a damp terry cloth to clean the stone fire surround. A flathead screwdriver tucked into the cloth enables me to clean all of the nooks and crannies in the stone. We're doing a thorough job here today. That's why it's called spring cleaning.
This is a very tall 200 year old gilt mirror here. I'm going to dust it with a microfiber cloth. Then I'm going to clean it the same way I cleaned the over mantle mirror. The glass is so old on this mirror that it will be impossible to ever make it look new again, but I don't mind. I don't mind that the mirror shows its age. It's part of its charm. I'm using a cordless shark vacuum to clean the window hangings. Baseboards are next. If my dog will move out of the way. Hello, I love you too. Now, a viewer named Ellen Rowland sent me a large number of these washcloths that she made by hand. I thought they were too beautiful to use, but she assured me that I should use them and that they are definitely washcloths, not hot pads. And I'm going to use here again, just vinegar and water on the baseboards. These boards are good. I think they're more than 12 inches tall. And to protect the wallpaper, I'm going to spray the cloth rather than spraying directly on the baseboard. And this is just vinegar and water. This Victorian table is in a corner of the parlor and I use it for my little self-serve bar. So I'm going to clean off all of the gadgetry here and then we're going to clean the table. Wine, more wine, gin, vodka, and two urns that are only here for decoration. This marble top table really needs nothing more than a damp microfiber cloth. I'm only using water here. I don't think it's terribly difficult to find such tables at auctions. And then I have to clean its four very funny little legs. Ice bucket, cocktail shaker, jigger, and cocktail spoon. microfiber cloth. Occasionally, if I think it needs it, I will polish this wood with mineral oil. The settee was built in 1815. It's a Boston piece. I'm using water and vinegar to clean these 197 year old floors. The parlor is clean. I don't know about you, but all of this cleaning has made me very hungry. Let's head into the kitchen. I'm going to fix one of those chicken fold over pies. To make this chicken fold over pie, I start with the crust. So I'm putting one and a half cups of all purpose flour in my little food processor. That's 200 grams of flour. 
half teaspoon of salt. Give this a quick mix. Now I'm going to add six tablespoons or 85 grams of unsalted butter and two tablespoons or about 25 grams of shortening. This is vegetable shortening. Shortening will give this crust a very nice tender and flaky texture. Put the lid on and just pulse to break up the butter. Then add one third cup or 80 mils of ice water through the feed tube while the machine is running. And I'm going to let this run just until the dough forms a ball. Now I'm transferring the dough to a sheet of cling film. I don't know why some people are afraid to make pie crust. It's really easy to do, especially if you have a food processor. And then just form this into a ball and flatten it into a disc. Wrap it up, pop it in the refrigerator, oh, for at least 30 minutes. For the chicken filling, I'm going to use some already cooked chicken. I cooked this in the Instant Pot last night. And from that chicken, I got three pints of really great chicken stock. So I'll be using the stock to make the sauce. I can't give you exact measurements here because I'm just estimating the amounts. To make the filling, I'm putting two tablespoons of butter and two tablespoons of cornstarch in a saucepan set over medium low heat. When the mixture begins to bubble, I stir for one minute just to cook the cornstarch. Next, I'm adding two cups or 480 mils of chicken stock. Stir until the mixture boils and turns thick. Since I did not season the chicken stock, I'm going to season it now. About a half teaspoon of salt, some grinds of black pepper, and about half a teaspoon of dried thyme leaves. Now I'm going to add the chicken. And this is off heat now. To cool the sauce and to add more flavor, I'm adding two big handfuls of frozen baby peas and one large handful of frozen cut green beans. I may have made too much filling, but that's all right. I can always use the surplus filling for something else. This looks wonderful. I'm going to let this cool off for just a little bit and we can roll out our pie crust. Since I did not add any onions to this filling, I'm going to add some of the onion powder that you and I bought at the general store in Canaan, New York a few weeks ago. About a half teaspoon. I'm going to roll out the crust on my pastry cloth here. So I'm just adding a light dusting of flour. Here's my chilled pastry dough. Now my oven has preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 200 degrees Celsius. I'm going to roll this into, oh, about an 11 inch circle. This crust rolls out particularly easily because we substituted some of the butter for vegetable shortening. I think the shortening gives the dough a certain elasticity. So this makes a lovely little dinner for two. Could make a lovely little dinner for four, depending on your appetite. I'm going to transfer the dough to a parchment lined baking sheet. Spoon the filling onto the lower half of the pastry dough.
I have enough filling left over to make another one of these fold over pies. I want to brush this border with beaten egg. I'm also going to use the egg to glaze the top of the crust. So you can really play around with the ingredients in a fold over pie. Now fold the top half over the bottom half, press, do it over here so you can see, press, and then fold the edge over. And then, flute the edge. Just want to make sure that you have a good seal. Then take a knife and cut some steam vents. Give the pastry an egg wash. The egg wash will encourage the crust to brown beautifully in the oven. Now you could prepare this fold over pie up to this point and then pop it into the refrigerator for several hours. I'm going to put mine in the oven right now for just 15 to 20 minutes. And I will change my clothes for dinner. And 20 minutes later, here is our beautiful chicken fold over pie. Let's cut into this pie. This smells wonderful. To accompany the pie, I made a very simple salad just with spring greens and some sesame flavored salad dressing and some little mandarin oranges. Let's head into the freshly clean parlor. A taste. You guys, I cannot tell you how delicious this pie is. The crust is super light and flaky. Of course, the chicken is moist and tender, and I love the addition, the peas and the green beans, and oh, that sauce made with the homemade chicken stock. It's really terrific. I'm going to have this salad for my second and final course. No dessert for me tonight. Again, thank you so much for spending time with me today. I really appreciate your company. I'll see you in next week's video. Bye for now.